Today I have four lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells. They are 3.3 volts each and I want to connect them together to make a 12 volt battery. So they are going to be connected in series. These are 50 amp hours each. So it's going to be a 12 volt 50 amp hour and they have a 50 amp continuous discharge. The problem with these cells is that they have an aluminum bar at the terminal both at the positive and the negative. There are no screws, no holes, there's no way to connect them together. And it's quite challenging to connect them together for reasons that I'm going to explain to you later in the video. I've had this for months and I still can't figure out how to connect them together, at least in a way that they can discharge safely at 50 amp continuous. And that means the connection has to be strong and robust enough to discharge at 50 amp. In this video, I'm going to show you how I do it, but I have never done this before. I have an idea in mind, but I don't know if that's going to work or not. I looked on the internet for a solution for this, but nobody has ever done this before. There is n absolutely no information on how to connect these together. So what you see in this video is the way I'm going to approach and solve this problem firsthand. And I'm sure I'm going to make some mistake, but I'm going to show you that as well. And hopefully by the end of this video, hopefully I will find a solution to connect them together. So let's get started. Today I have a lithium iron phosphate battery. This is a prismatic cell. And the problem with this battery is that the terminal doesn't have a screw or a hole or anything for me to mount this to a wire or to another battery. At the center of the terminal is the actual terminal but then it's laser welded onto a aluminum bar and there's no way for me to connect to a wire or anything. Both of these terminals are aluminum, so soldering is out of the question. I can spot weld it, but spot welding aluminum is tricky. Unless you have a very strong spot welder, this won't work either. Plus, this battery is 50 amp hour, so the discharge rate is 50 amp continuous. I have nickel strips, and I can probably, probably spot weld it on this terminal. But the problem with nickel strip is that it's only 0.1 millimeter and my spot welder can only do 0.1 or 0.15. That's it. Thicker than that it can't spot weld on the nickel strip. It won't work. I need something that can do a 50 amp discharge and a 0.1 millimeter nickel strip. That won't do. So my option here is very limited. So my plan is to bend this aluminum bar upward 90 degrees so that I can drill a hole through the aluminum bar and that way I can mount a wire to it. On the other side, which is the negative side, is a different story. We still have the aluminum bar, but then you see this piece of plastic here. That is the insulation between the aluminum bar and the aluminum below it and the aluminum below it is the case of the battery and that is also the positive terminal so we got the aluminum bar which is a negative terminal and a thin layer of plastic insulation on the bottom and then we got the battery casing which is the positive terminal so it's going to be very challenging to work on this side so the plan is, I'm going to cut a groove on the aluminum bar here and use a pair of plier, grab on here and pull it up 90 degrees. Now I'm going to use my heat gun and heat it up. I just need it to be warm enough so when I pull it up, it doesn't crack the aluminum.
I cannot pull this up with this plier because it looks like it's gonna damage the aluminum bar. So I'm gonna use a flat head screwdriver and try to pry it up. It is up a little bit, just enough to squeeze in a screwdriver. I've managed to pry it up that much, and the part where I cut out the groove here, it does not bend up along the groove. Instead, it's bent up right at the part where it's uh, welded onto the terminal here. The part of the aluminum where I clamp my pliers on is dented pretty bad. Aluminum is very soft so that's why I have to use a flathead screwdriver to pry from the bottom. The bottom is a piece of steel. This is not aluminum, this is steel. This is aluminum so it can take the force of the uh, screwdriver and that means on this side I can't do the same thing because underneath here is not a piece of steel underneath here is a piece of plastic and if I use a screwdriver and try to pry this up it's gonna punch a hole right through the plastic and short out the battery but for this side this should be enough the gap is big enough for me to make a hole through this aluminum bar to mount my wire onto it. Next step is to do the same thing for the negative terminal, but this one is different. So the plan is I'm going to drill a hole and tap it and use a screw to pull this up. But I have to be careful not to drill a hole too deep, otherwise it will puncture through the plastic and everything will short out. Got my tap here and I'm gonna tap the hole. I've got my screw tapped in. Now I'm gonna try and pull it. Well, even when I tap a hole with a screw and I'm trying to pull it out, but it's too hard to pull out. So let's try something else. I'm going to use a flathead screwdriver and stick it in the middle between the plastic and the case. And I have to make sure that I don't puncture the plastic and that will get onto the negative terminal and that will short out. So I'm just going to hammer it down lightly like that. See it goes down and that will pry the uh, aluminum bar up. Now you can see there's a gap already between the plastic and the case. But I don't want to push it too much with a metal screwdriver. I don't want to break the plastic and short out the terminal so I'm going to use a piece of wood. This piece of chopstick is going to replace a screwdriver. It's my piece of plastic sharpened like a chisel. Now I'm going to put it in here and hammer it down. And I'm not afraid of it shorting out anything. It's wood. Now you can see there's already a gap here already. And it already pushed the aluminum bar up quite a bit already. I would say about three to four millimeter up already. So now that it is lifted off the plastic a little bit, I'm gonna use a metal screwdriver and pry it up. But I'm gonna use my piece of chopstick here 
so that it doesn't rest on the plastic but it rests on this piece of wood that way it doesn't damage or short out anything yep it's going up let's try a bigger screwdriver I have to do this at the same time not trying to short this out yep it's going up there we go yep So there we go, positive terminal, negative terminal, and down here is the case and also the positive terminal. What surprised me is that this piece of plastic insulation doesn't cover that part right in the middle inside there. There's a hole. I don't know what that's for. It's just waiting to be shorted out. This nipple here, down here, that is the case, and it's also the positive terminal. And it is very close to the aluminum bar, which is a negative terminal. So when I drill this hole, I almost touched that. That is crazy. So now that I got the aluminum bar lifted up, I can actually drill a hole through and tap a screw through it without worrying about it touching the bottom. I can do the same thing on this side. This side is fine. You can touch this, you can touch that. It's the same thing. But that side is not. I've got my whole drill right through. Now I can tap it. You can see when I tap it to make a thread, the tap goes right through the hole. That's about two millimeters sticking out. So if I don't lift this up, it already shorted out the bottom. Here we go. I've got the two holes tapped. Now I can put a screw through it. One more screw on the other side. And here it is, one screw here, one screw here. So on the negative terminal, you can see the screw has a gap about, I would say about three millimeter gap between the end of the screw and the case below it. And on this side, it doesn't matter because this is the positive terminal and the case is also positive terminal. Now that I know what to do, let me show you how easy it is to make this. For the positive terminal, it's very easy. You don't have to be afraid that it's going to short out. Put a screwdriver in there and just bang it down. And then you can just pry it up. Just like that. Now that it's up a little bit, just use a bigger flathead screwdriver and pry it up. A little bit more for the negative terminal do the same thing just a little bit more careful now we have a gap put in the bamboo stick voila we got a we got a bigger gap now that we have a small gap, put a screwdriver in there, piece of bamboo, pry it up. There you go. Now we use a bigger screwdriver, pry it up some more. Try not to touch this terminal, that will be a disaster. There you go. How cool.
Who is that? Now we're gonna drill and tap. Here's my screw. Yep, goes right in. And that's the screw on the other side. Goes right in as well. That's awesome. Here we've got two batteries. The first one took me a long time to figure that out, but once I figured that out, this one took me five minutes. In case you're wondering what kind of screws I'm using, this is the screw. Size 632 and it's 3 eighths of an inch long. I'm planning to make a 12 volt battery out of these cells. Here are the other two cells and I need to connect them together in series. So this is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal of the second cell so they are going to be connected together. I'm going to use copper pipe to connect them together. I cut the pipe out, I flatten it out and drill two holes. Now it's ready to go. This is size 3.8 copper pipe. Now I just need to put it on, put on my screw And voila! This can easily take 50 amps. Now I just need to do the same for the other two batteries and connect them all together in series and voila! I have finished with my 12 volt battery pack and the voltage come out of the main terminal is 13 volts. So there you have it, how to make the battery terminal for lithium ion phosphate prismatic cells with aluminum bars at the terminal which is quite challenging and overwhelming but once you know what to do it's just a piece of cake that's all for now folks thanks for watching and i will see you in the next video